hello everyone and welcome to our session, Breakthrough Strategies for Improving Direct Mail and Out-of-Home ROI. So before we get started, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. Um, we are going to be chatting for about 30 to 40 minutes um, and then and answering any questions that you have at the end. Please don't leave us hanging. So take a minute, navigate to the Q&A tab on the right-hand side and ask any questions you have throughout this, prep, this session. Also, during this presentation, we're going to be discussing ways to connect with your customers in the real world. So think billboards, postcards, direct mailers. Um, before we get started, we also think you should head over to the top right hand corner of your screen and under handouts, you're going to see two ROI calculators. And both of these are going to help you measure the impact of those channels I just mentioned. So feel free to just open up those now. Um, but if you don't get a chance, we will also send them to you along with the recording of this session. All right, so let's jump in. Um, I am Julie Ginn. I am the VP of Demand Generation here at LOB. LOB is direct mail automation software that simplifies printing, um, address verification, and delivery. I am really happy to be joined here by John McClung. He is the group director at AdQuick. So John, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about AdQuick, and then for those of us who are unfamiliar with the term out-of-home advertising, could you please give us just an overall definition? Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Julie. Um, I'm John McClung. I, I head up sales and out-of-home strategy here at AdQuick. The best way to think about AdQuick is that we are essentially the operating system for the whole out-of-home channel from planning, buying, measurement, uh, we help with the entire process. And for those that aren't as familiar with Out of Home, uh, a lot of the description is, is in the name. It's, it's any real world advertising that is, that is outside of the home. So traditionally you'd think of things like billboards, transit advertising, ads at airports, but also kind of more niche placements like pedicabs or hand painted murals. That's great. Um, all right, John, I'm so glad to have you here. Let's take a look at what we're going to be discussing today. So here's our agenda. We're going to cover some of the challenges that I'm sure we can all relate to when it comes to improving campaign ROI. Um, and then we're going to talk about these digital alternatives we just mentioned, like intelligent direct mail um, and all of those great things that John just talked about uh, as a way of overcoming those challenges. And then lastly, we're going to end with the importance of measurement, right? And ensure you're getting the return that you are expecting on all of those marketing dollars. All right, so let's let's jump in. And I think it's important to start by acknowledging the reality of this just crazy current economic environment we are in, right? Pressure is on. The pressure is on to deliver more with less, especially as we all seem to be flirting, right, with this recession and everything else that we hear is coming our way. So many of us have had budgets and resources cut, but we're still asked to deliver the same results. And while channels like email and digital ads are important, I think we all recognize that digital fatigue is at a crazy all time high. Um, I was reading a Forrester marketing study recently that confirmed this actually. It said 76% of marketers said they are over dependent on digital tactics, even though they know engagement is dropping. And on top of that, cost is going up, right? So we've got a situation here where we're getting less bang for our buck. And I think that's probably one of the more humbling things that we all face when you are in marketing, that what used to work before doesn't always work moving forward. And we have to adapt to succeed. So John, I wanna take a look at these stats on this next slide, right? And what I've seen with our digital channels is that we're trailing behind in effectiveness, right? It's getting worse. And because of what I just mentioned, right? That digital fatigue and after years of people staring at glowing rectangles all the time, we're getting numb to digital messaging. So when you take a look at these slides, right? It's really scary, especially considering the next blow is gonna be the death of third-party cookies. Um, you know, at the same time, we're seeing the opposite when we have real human connections. So handwritten notes, phone calls, people are responding to these touch points. How, how does this mesh with what you've been seeing? This definitely lines up with what we've been seeing in, in the out-of-home space as well. A huge portion of, of our new partners are folks that have come from the digital space. They've only ever been touching uh, digital first channels. And because of all of those things that are happening, 
um, across that landscape right now. They're looking to what were previously classified as more traditional channels like out of home, direct mail, um, and kind of expanding what that looks like in terms of their media mix. Um, it, you know, it's interesting. If you had asked me 10 years ago, would the future be in out of home and direct mail? I would be like, no, that's the past. But it's the exact opposite, right? Moving yeah. forward, this is where we're going to get the best results. Um, so if we go to the next slide, you know, John, we talk about the importance of channels mattering. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about these stats for us. Yeah, for sure. One, one thing that's really important to keep in mind is that all of these devices that we have around are, are really noisy. There's, there's a ton of voices that are trying to get your attention at, at all times, thousands of screaming CTAs, and it starts to feel a little more like white noise. We're getting numb to the stimulus from it and becoming screen blind. But the physical world doesn't suffer from the noise in the same way. Things like postcards, billboards, mailers really break through that clutter to help deliver messages. And you can see it on this slide. So 90% of audiences uh, in the US notice out of home ads, while seven out of 10 say they prefer to receive direct mail over, over digital mail. Both out of home and direct mail have, have a longer shelf life as well, sticking around for days instead of just a moment while you're scrolling through your phone. Uh, direct mail ends up kind of being the new coaster. It's, it's in your house for an average of 17 days. Uh, and, and that's why transitioning to more of an omni-channel mix is so important to integrate these channels. Yeah, so let's talk about the omni-channel mix, right? So, you know, my team and I, we attended a marketing conference um, just last week, and there was a lot of talk about channel diversification and a term I haven't heard in a long time, but it's been around forever, and that is the rule of seven. So for those of you who have as many wrinkles on your face as I do, you will remember the rule of seven is, you know, simply the number of times a person has to interact with your brand um, before they take an action. So typically it's seven times, right? Um, and every so often I still try to validate this by going into Salesforce or Marketo and looking at our lead history. It is seven, sometimes it's as high as nine. Um, and so this is valid, right? And it's why diversifying your channel mix is in, to, for more than just digital, right? Is so important. It's exposure, right? And it's really hard to get that exposure in these highly competitive and very expensive digital spaces. So we see this with our own campaigns. We need to combine um, direct mail and our other with our other stuff like email remarketing gifting to get those better responses. Um, is that the same thing that with out of home advertising, you have to integrate it with digital or does it work just as effectively as a standalone channel? While it works effectively on its own, all, all channels work best when you're, when you're considering multiple uh, formats in your media mix. So um, in terms of how out of home impacts digital channels, Nielsen recently ran an online activation survey that found that out of home was, was most effective in, tri in terms of driving offline uh, mass medium activity. Um, so it actually delivered four times more online activity per ad dollar spent than TV, radio, or print. Uh, direct mail was, was not part of this uh, specific uh, reporting that they ran on, but in terms of kind of the effectiveness of out of home, you can, you can see it on this graph here. Um, it's, it's really helpful to kind of look at that recall um, across all of these channels and see that out of home is really resonating and then helping to drive conversions on digital. You can also see kind of how efficient out of home tends to be. It's, it's among the lowest CPMs of any media channel. Um, so the average CPM for things like billboards are, are only $2.84, uh, just over $3 for posters and transit ends up being right around $2 as well. Um, there's very few out of home formats other than kind of large format spectaculars, things like Times Square, hand painted murals that, that are really over say a $10 CPM. So you can really, really drive efficiency in terms of your spend there. And then on the next slide, we'll see how out of home is driving value. So, uh, in terms of driving search activity, uh, it drove 5.3 times the rate that, that was expected given its relative ad spend. So while out of home only accounted for 
uh, only accounted for 4.1% of ad spend. It actually drove 22.22% of the search engine action. And then oh. I'll, let, I'll let Julie touch on uh, some breakthrough tips here as well. Uh, yeah, so I, I hope that John, I've done a really good job at convincing you that you need to at least be thinking about these channels, right? Um, to help drive better engagement, to get conversions faster. Um, and so we're just gonna walk through some very practical tips for how to use these two channels. Um, we've got, I think four or five of them. So let's start with the first one. And it's probably the most obvious because I've touched on this a couple of times already. And that is the whole concept of combining digital and in real life touch points for your entire omni-channel campaign. So the example that you see here is an actual campaign that is in flight for LOB right now. This is our change the channel to LOB campaign. Um, the concept behind this is that the 1980s were great in a lot of ways, um, except for direct mail marketing and possibly my hair. <laughs> so it's time to step into the future with LOB. So this is a very creative campaign. We wanted to go big. Um, and so we built this entire ecosystem of communication touch points. So you can see on the digital side, we've got um, a personalized URL, we've got email, and we've got LinkedIn ads because we know our buyers and we know that is where the, they are, right? That platform works. And then in real life, we've integrated two touch points, a postcard and a custom Rubik's cube that has a handwritten note that drives folks back to this personalized URL. So on the next slide, what you'll see is the campaign execution. And I wanna remind everybody about this rule of seven, right? So what we did was we thought about when would be the best time to hit somebody with a real, in real life a touch point. So we started with three digital pieces of communication, linked ads, LinkedIn ads, and then two emails. We dropped the direct mail piece. We had somebody call, and then we followed up with two other digital touch points. And we're seeing incredible success right now on this. All right, John, I'm gonna hand it over to you to talk about retargeting. I especially wanted to highlight a retargeting of uh, out of home to direct mail uh, that I think is gonna be really valuable for the, for the folks on, on this webinar here. So because out of home is a one-to-many channel, it's really broad. You're going to be reaching a lot of people outside of your, your typical audience that you'd be targeting on, on digital channels. So in, in order to really go and kind of have the highest impact and bring this into more of an omni-channel mix, what we can do is we can track exposures of device IDs to each of the ad units that you ran for out of home and build a list of individuals that we want to target across direct mail. So you can use out of home as that broad initial message that's getting folks exposed to your brand, but then have more targeted follow-ups that are gonna have a great opportunity for people to convert when they're getting exposed with direct mail at their home as well. All right, so let's look at the next slide. And this is tip, tip number three, and I can't say this enough, personalization is the way to go. Um, I'm gonna show you two examples that our customers personalize direct mail because I know that these have been really effective. So the first one is Wayfair. Wayfair uses buyer behavior to personalize all of their, their direct mail. So for example, in this case, they had a customer who went onto their website. They were interested in purchasing a tool shed, did not complete the purchase. Shortly after that, their system automatically triggered a direct mail piece to this person with a actual image of the item they were considering buying. Um, second thing, look at this on the right. This is an example from ThreadUp. For those of you who are not familiar with ThreadUp, they are an online clothing reseller. Um, the person that this was the recipient of this postcard, they really liked the color yellow. Um, and ThreadUp knew that because of their search history and past purchases. And so they sent them this mailer, um, it had an offer, you can see this, for a discount and lots of yellow imagery and yellow colors um, to get the person to respond. Um, I think this is a fantastic example of using personalization down to the individual level to get the responses that you need. Um, John, I think you've got a personalization example too. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to highlight a few different ways that are kind of uh, most helpful when you're looking to run a more kind of personalized targeted out of home campaign because people don't tend to think of out of home as being a very targeted channel. So one example here is that we can tailor 
messaging and we can tailor inventory selection based on a target audience. So we can use kind of more generalized demographic data that, that you could use for kind of uh, Census Bureau targeted campaigns, but we can also layer in kind of more niche targeted audience details, um, especially things like first party audience data that the client has internally that maybe they've been using on digital channels. And then we can also do uh, very targeted uh, geographic uh, uh, inventory selection and messaging. So things like proximity to specific POIs if you're a restaurant or, or a retail operator. Um, maybe you wanna target specific zip codes that you see a large portion of your customers operating in or you just wanna be along kind of major highways in specific cities that, that you know are gonna be getting the most traffic. And then along with that, out of home means a lot of different things now. Again, it's any ad outside of the house. There's things like billboards, but there's also ads in uh, different venue types. So uh, screens in the waiting rooms of veterinarian offices uh, in office elevators um, or kind of out and about in, in malls and other shopping centers. Um, you know, it's it's funny, it wasn't too long ago where we used to say content is king and now we say personal, personalization is king. That's where it's at, right? That's right. Um, so we've got one more tip for you before um, John and I talk about measurement. And the fourth tip is just to remember that you can test and optimize both of these things, all of these things, just like you would with any of your other digital channels. In fact, we test and optimize direct mail just like email. So, you know, we will use different postcard sizes. We'll use different formats. Sometimes we'll use a postcard. Sometimes we'll use a personalized letter. Um, we'll change our tone, just like you would change a subject line in an email. Sometimes we'll try something very casual. Other times we'll try formal language. Um, sometimes we'll send something very short and sometimes very content heavy. So you can test and optimize everything in direct mail, just like you would in email. And John, how about for you guys? Yeah, some of the main things that we tend to recommend uh, individuals to test and optimize for and out of home. Uh, one is gonna be things like just geographic market. You don't have to advertise in, in a top 10 DMA. There's gonna be inventory selections uh, all in, in anywhere that you're looking to run. Um, so you could go and kind of run in an underutilized market where maybe your spend is going to go further than say in New York City. You could also go and add some variety with different out of home formats. So we encourage our partners to uh, think outside the billboard, consider testing, testing different channels, things like transit, moving media like wrapped cars or digital trucks, or some of those place based uh, venues that I mentioned as well. The thing that you can also do with uh, programmatic out of home is uh, really go and optimize and test messaging. So you can go and have a variety of different creative assets that you wanna have up and running during your campaign. And based on the performance of those different messages, you can optimize that live while your campaign is up and running so that your yeah. campaign can get more efficient and more impactful as it goes along. Yeah, I think people are gonna be surprised that the old concept of either, for, I mean, for us, like printing, batch printing and sending one message to a large group of people is dead, right? That's not how we do it anymore. It's uh, hyper-focused, it's personalized, um, and then for it's more meaningful and you, you get a much better response rate. Um, hey, John, let me hand it over to you. Let's talk about measurement now. Great, yeah, thanks, Julie. Um, one of the other misconceptions that, that tends to exist around out of home is that it can't be measured. So we have a graph on this next slide that, that indicates what the uh, different kind of methodologies we can do throughout the funnel to measure different impacts of a campaign. So out of home is typically thought of as, as a very strong upper funnel brand awareness channel, which it absolutely is. So you would measure something like that with brand awareness surveys, consideration surveys. Um, when you get a little more mid funnel, um, you can do things like uh, running additional targeted surveys that are a little more narrower, can give you an idea of kind of how you stand against the competition and you can really tailor those questions. And then low funnel, which is what a lot of folks that are coming from the digital space are particularly interested in, we can tie results to a bunch of different lower funnel KPIs, things like mapping exposures to out of home to web conversions, um, app based conversions in store foot traffic, or actual transactions uh, within retail environments. So you get a good picture of the overall impact of your campaign um, and, and how it and how out of home drives success. 
Yeah, and I, you know, I I think that the big question here is how, how do you build a campaign that's that will feed those metrics that matter, right? So, you know, creating unique identifiers are absolutely the way to go for tracking. So I know a lot of our customers will use, you know, trackable phone numbers and coupon codes. At Lob internally, we rely heavily on, um, you know, URLs, personalized URLs and UTM parameters. Um, and we tend to drop people off on landing pages with forms. So we consider, you know, form conversions one of the first things that we track. Um, and this is, as I mentioned before, very similar to how we, measure the effectiveness of email. And it also allows us to course correct, right? If something isn't working. And we do this by watching our performance metrics in real time on our dashboards. So it is really important to have a tool to support this measurement. I mean, dashboards are a fantastic way of knowing very quickly whether or not you're going in the right direction. So if you take a look at the next slide, the things that we track within our own software are things like deliverability, we'll look at in-home dates, we'll look at mail speed and geographic um, distribution. And then there is other data that we rely on that Salesforce for. So, you know, things like um, attribution back to pipeline and bookings. So what kind of analytics does AdQuick have? Yeah, we, we leverage our dashboards um, for, for similar reasons as well. We, we want uh, these, these marketers to have a sophisticated way to see how their campaign is performing while it's up and running, make sure everything is, is delivering in, in terms of results there. And so the main, the main uh, components that we're using here are gonna be a dashboard to show results for those web-based conversions, foot traffic and app events. And we can report on things like frequency um, before conversion. We can report on the total tracked exposures, the conversion rate, um, and then really give a solid breakdown of which specific formats were delivering those results, um, what markets were strongest, what creative performed the best, to give a really good idea and, and help to improve those campaigns over time so that you have both data on how that campaign went, but then also how to optimize each subsequent campaign. And then to summarize our discussion here, uh, we've covered those problems that, that we're all facing in terms of digital fatigue, um, that's continuing to grow. Uh, the good news is that there are other channels to consider adding to your marketing mix that, that are very effective at delivering messages and help lift uh, your efforts into those other channels. Finally, we, we can't track what you don't measure. So make sure you plan for how you're going to measure all of your programs so you can assess which are working, which are not, and optimize for better results. And thank you so much for joining our discussion today. And, and we'll open it up for questions now. All right. Yep. Okay, guys. So thank you to everyone who submitted questions and for bearing with us to the end. We really appreciate it. Um, if you have a question for either me or John, please submit it in the Q&A panel. We're going to try to tackle at least a handful of them now. Um, and then afterwards, if we haven't had a chance to answer your question in real time, we will follow up with you after the webinar. Um, so let's see. John, first question is for you, and it is, how can you track lower funnel events in out of home? Yeah, so some of those different conversion events that I talked about in terms of web, app, foot traffic, and transaction-based conversions, what we're doing is, is we're mapping uh, mobile device IDs that are exposed to each of the ads that you're running for your out of home campaign. For web conversions, it's, it's anything that you can throw a pixel on. It could be a homepage visit, uh, transaction, anything throughout the funnel. Uh, for those app events, we're going to tie in kind of any different activity that you're looking to track there. Um, and then for foot traffic, we're using mobile location data again to map, did this person, was this person exposed to the ad? And then did they actually convert and store? So it gives you a really strong idea um, of how those specific metrics are performing throughout the campaign. Nice. Um, okay, let me see. We've got a couple of questions here. Um, they're technical and they're all around integration for direct mail. So uh, let's see, the gist of this is how do you integrate direct mail software into your tech stack or can it be used as a standalone product? Okay, so that's a great question that is um, specific for Lob. Um, and I'll do the best to answer this, although I am not a product engineer. Um, you can use Lob either integrated with your marketing automation platform, um, or it can be a standalone product. The way that we do use it is we have a webhook between Lob and Marketo, and we trigger direct mail pieces off of people's actions. 
So the way to think about this is you hook the two systems up, somebody goes to your product page and abandons, you can send a direct mail piece to them directly from the system. Okay, let's see, uh, next question. How do you control when the direct mail piece will arrive, for example, in the cadence that you showed? Um, this is another, another uh, answer that has to do with eating our own dog food or drinking our own champagne. Um, Lob has built-in functionality that, that lets us have in-home delivery. So we can choose the date that we want a piece to hit someone's mailbox. So it's fantastic. We um, are at the point now where we could send an email, send an email, know when the direct mail piece hits. When the direct mail hit piece is in the mailbox, we send them another email that lets them know it's there, go get it. Um, so it's very sophisticated. Um, okay. So John, question around budget. Um, how do you determine the right amount of budget for an outdoor ad campaign? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So you have a lot of uh, variety in pricing without a foam from, from the media market that you're looking to run in, the, the format, um, different uh, kind of target areas even within a given market. Out of home basically works like real estate there. You're, you're talking about a, a fixed uh, location in space that maybe a lot of people want. So in popular media markets like New York City, in order to really drive like market level domination, you have to be looking at spending a, a million to $2 million a month to really, really kind of dominate and break through the noise there. But then you could go to a market like Nashville or Kansas City and invest 50K, 100K and have that same level of impact that you would have had in New York City at a million or $2 million budget. But again, there's a ton of variance in terms of pricing across formats. So kind of regardless of what your budget looks like, we can go and, and help to optimize a campaign that's uh, gonna be most relevant and uh, most efficient in terms of that spend. That's great. Um, okay, so one more question and, and then let's wrap this party up. And it's around verifying addresses. So how do you make sure your direct mail piece is going to the right person? Um, this has a lot to do with deliverability, right? Um, and so the first thing I would say is uh, think about integrating the ask for addresses in all of your digital communication, especially home addresses now that we're working from home. You know, getting corporate addresses have been typically pretty easy for quite a while through any kind of data brokers, right? Zoom info, anything like that. Um, but home addresses take a little bit of elbow grease to get. So for us, in a lot of our lead nurturing sequences, we've added a little ad that says, do you want to see lob in action? Click here to fill out a form, and we collect home addresses that way. So that's one. Um, the other is that you have to use an address verification product. So we have that also built into our system. Before we hit send on anything, it will come back and say, you know, X percentage we can guarantee is going to be sent. And that's how we know that we're um, not wasting paper and not wasting our time sending the piece. Okay, guys. Well, as I promised, um, I was going to wrap up there. Um, John, I'm going to thank you again. It has been a pleasure having you here. Yeah, thank you, Julie. Um, and uh, I will ask everybody to keep submitting questions for the next couple of minutes. Um, we will follow up with anything that we haven't talked to or haven't addressed and otherwise. We hope you have a really great day, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much.